So the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to assume we have 100 grams of compound X. Well, if we have 100 grams, and we know that right now we have 22 grams of oxygen, okay, 39 grams of nitrogen, 33 grams of carbon, and 5.6 grams of hydrogen. Okay, great. So the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take these different masses of the part elements and turn them into moles. And the reason we want to go into moles is because that will allow us to look at the relationship within the molecule. So if you remember, say when we looked at sodium chloride, for every one mole of sodium, there's going to be one mole of chlorine, right? Because for every one atom of sodium, there's going to be one atom of chlorine. But that's not necessarily true in terms of grams. Because sodium weighs so much less than chlorine, one gram of sodium is going to be a larger mass of chlorine because there's a difference in their atomic mass. But if we convert to moles, that allows us to determine the relationship of these four elements within the molecule. And when I say relationship, I mean just the numerical ratios between them. So first step, we're going to convert all these to moles. So we have one mole of oxygen. 16 grams. Once again, pay attention, since this is oxygen by itself, it's just 16. If you're doing, say, O2, it would be 32. So we have one mole of nitrogen, so 14 grams. Here we have one mole of carbon, 12 grams. And finally, one gram of hydrogen. And so once again, we took our molar mass of each element, just inversed it so that we had moles in the numerator, grams in the denominator, and multiplied it by the mass that we had. So if you take those, plug them into your calculator, you're going to get 1.375 for oxygen. For nitrogen, you're going to get 2.786. For carbon, you're going to get 2.7. Five. Then for hydrogen, you're going to get 5.6. Tell me what. Okay. There's oxygen. Okay, so this next step is that we're going to simplify all this to try to get rid of as many decimals as possible. And remember, the thing we're interested in is the ratios of these. So what we can do is we can come here, we're going to divide through by the smallest number, so 1.375. Okay, so that's going to give us a 1 here. So we have 1 oxygen for every, if you plug that in, that's going to give us a 2.02. Here it's going to give us two exactly, which is kind of nice. And then for hydrogen, it's going to give us 4.07. All right. So remember, these are just the ratios. So for every one oxygen, we have two nitrogens, two carbons, four hydrogens. And something key to remember here is this example came out very nicely, where all of these decimals are very close to a whole number. But if we had something like uh, 4.5, or 3.33 or 2.66. These ones are far enough from a whole number and right easily recognizable as something that you should probably do another step. And in this step, you just multiply all four of your values here by a number to get rid of these decimals. So for this one, you need to multiply everything by two. This one you multiply everything by three. Similarly with this one you multiply everything by three. And essentially what that does is it gives you whole number relationships between all of your components, which is important because having two points, 
six six atoms of carbon in a compound doesn't really make sense. But being able to say whole number, such as four, two or nine, if you multiply this by two, does give us an opportunity to make something called the empirical formula. And the empirical formula is just the smallest integer numbers that maintain the ratio between elements. So for instance, if you had C2H8, the empirical formula would be CH4, right? Because the ratio to hydrogens to carbons is still four to one, but, and one and four are both integers, but both of these are smaller than two and eight. So this would be the molecular formula Where this one would be the empirical. Okay, but notice what we're looking for. We're looking for molecular. So we're looking for this more complicated one, but what we're doing right now is just giving us the most simple, straightforward integer values of the ratios between elements. So if we wrote this one out, we'd see that we have two carbons, so we'd have C2. Nitrogens two, but we'll save that for a second. We'll do hydrogens first. So C two H four. So we can have two nitrogens and one oxygen. All right. So this here is our empirical formula. because it's the lowest integers possible to maintain the ratio between elements. But we also have a molar mass, which is 144 grams per mole. So this was going to help us find our molecular formula. So we look here, if we find the molar mass of this compound, we see that we're gonna have two times 12 for carbon, plus four from hydrogen, plus two, that's not good, times 14 from nitrogen, plus 16 from oxygen. When you add that all up, you find 72 grams per mole. Okay. Yep, 72 grams per mole. So you'll see that our next step is going to take the 72 grams per mole, that's 144, and we're going to divide the 144 by 72 to find out what number we need to multiply each of these subscripts by in order to have the right molecular formula. So, as it turns out, it's just two, right? 144 divided by two, or rather divided by 72, we go to two, take that, multiply everything in here by two. We'll go ahead and raise these. And voila. 3 times 2 is 4, 4 to 8, 2 to 4, 1 to 2. And now we have our molecular formula.